Representative Debbie Lesko says that she is not seeking re-election. She wants to spend more time with family, which I believe her. Ms. Lesko is a very, very nice woman. Uh, I've had many uh, occasions to speak with her. Um, she quietly did her job in the House of Representatives, and she is saying, I'm not going to run again. Who will? And so now we know one name we've heard of is Abe Hamaday is officially in the race. He was the, the candidate that lost the statewide race for attorney general by a very, very slim margin uh, and did some challenges to the election, but has uh, now looks like he's going to run for the House seat. And also on the Republican side, they say Blake Masters may be a possibility to run for a House seat. So it would be interesting to see two people that are largely connected um, and friends, I know that they are friendly, to see if they would run against each other. The reason why I bring this up is there's going to be a shift in how things are done in D.C. How dramatic will that shift be? Is there going to be a backlash? We're going to talk more, obviously, as the day goes on. And, and uh, it looks as if that uh, Jim Jordan did not have the votes to win the speaker's job. So how many more votes is it going to take? How long are we going to see a House of Re Representatives in chaos and what kind of a price will Republicans pay? If I if I am a if I were a Democrat uh, candidate, I would be pointing to dysfunction and saying they and even it, it point, paint it in a rosy picture. You know, uh, the Republicans couldn't possibly have known that what was going to happen between Hamas and Israel was going to happen. So we didn't have a speaker, and that's a nightmare. But then once they knew that this was happening, we still don't have a speaker. We still don't have enough people in the Republican Party that are going to say we have to set our differences aside and we have to make some hard choices in order to do the world's business, to do our business and how we're going to influence and affect what's happening around the world. Uh, I don't see that happening. So it does, who are going to be the people that win these races? How is this going to play out? Um, is is a great question. The United States Senate race, we uh, we hear that um, that uh, Senator Sinema hasn't raised as much money uh, says it's uh, here's the headline at ktar.com uh post shaky fundraising totals for possible re-election bid um again i don't know how accurate that is uh, i know that there's been some big numbers from uh co from congressman gallego that from ruben gallego uh but and kerry lake is now in the race as a republican there is still there's still sheriff lamb from pinell county in the race but she doesn't have any data that's in but this is an interesting uh, uh, headline, Kerry Lake's changing rhetoric on abortion and stolen elections. This is an Axios story. Um, she looked like a hard right Trump-backed Kerry Lake who lost last year. What is she saying? She said, I may disagree with the Arizonans who voted for Joe Biden. I do, but I don't think you are a threat to democracy. You are citizens like me, she said at a campaign launch last week. Um, so is, is and, and this is again, someone that may be uh, messaging differently, seeing that messaging differently can be a way to be successful from a statewide race for the governor's office, which she almost won in the again as a first time candidate. I, I want you to re, I, you know she is she's got some advantages with name ID in the valley, but I don't know that she was a no name around the state. She's got some advantages as a public speaker. Um, one of the things you have to credit Carrie Lake with is she is a fantastic. A public speaker. She is someone that knows how to, and I've been in the rooms with her where she's been the speaker. She knows how to read the room. She knows how to react to the room. She knows how to engage the room. She is very good at that. Um, I've known Carrie for a long time. Uh, will the rhetoric change? If you want to win, will you go to the voters and tell them, I'm not saying tell them what they want to hear because it sounds like you're not going to do any of those things, but do you know who your base is and who is going to vote for you? And then are you able to speak to people that may vote for you and tell them what they need to hear from you? That, that is something that I don't think happened last time around. If I'm being totally honest, that's not what happened. I think that, that Kerry Lake spoke to the base and continued to speak to the base. And there is a ton of moderate and independent voters out there that felt as if they weren't being that, – that she did not speak for them. Um, and I, if she changes that, can she win this race? I think it's a great question. This race for the United States Senate between uh, Senator Sinema, if she decides to run again, and, and again, I think she's a formidable candidate. If she is someone that decides she's going to run again, she's a force to be reckoned with. She has a record. Uh, she is another one that knows how to engage and captivate a room of people. She's very charismatic. But then you've got uh, on one side of the you know polar opposites politically, you've got Gallego on the left, you've got Lake on the right, 
and then you've got someone that is a, a, a is an independent by by statement and is kind of legislated as an independent on some things. You are going to now see how do the voters, where do the voters go with those three candidates? If this ends up being the way the race goes, I am fascinated with how it is going to play itself out. So we'll watch for this. Um, we're going to try to reach out to Congresswoman Lesko's office and maybe get a catch up with her before she leaves and her reasoning behind not running for re-election and making the announcement now. And it should be an interesting conversation with her. What we're going to do just after 10 o'clock is get an update on the speaker's race. We had David Schweikert on with us this morning. Uh, we're going to talk about the latest attempt to get a speaker of the House and how long can this possibly take. We're going to find out whether or not uh, Jordan can get enough votes to get the majority. It looks right now as the vote is going on that he does not have enough. But we're going to find out if he is going to have enough and what it will look like if Jordan doesn't have that, those votes.